Have you ever making beats in FL Studio and they sound amazing, but the second you upload them to YouTube, SoundCloud, BeatStars, whatever, they sound like muddy down, lowered volume garbage? Well, you're not crazy. Let me explain what's happening. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Juno Beats. This is going to be a little bit different of a video tutorial today. Basically, I've been trying to upload beats to YouTube lately to try to sell them, make some money, you know. Every time I upload them, I notice that they sound way worse than the quality in FL Studio when I'm listening to it on my computer. So it sort of sent me down this rabbit hole. Why is it doing this? What can be done about it? How do we fix it? All that stuff. So hopefully whatever I learned can be shared with you today. But basically what's happening is this thing called loudness normalization. Any audio video platform like YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Hulu, Netflix, anything that has any kind of content, there's this principle called loudness normalization. Basically, they want all their content to be the same uniform across the entire platform. And this makes perfect sense. You don't wanna be listening to a song, for example, on Spotify that's really chill, really normal volume, and all of a sudden the next song that you play is like blasting and destroying your eardrums. But essentially, this is what's causing your beats to be lowered in volume. So fun little history fact, a lot of these principles are rooted in what was passed in the early 2000s by the FCC called the CALM Act, C-A-L-M. This stands for Commercial Advertisement Loudness, Mitigation Act in the early 90s, there were a lot of like TV advertisers that thought they were gonna be real slick. And in order to gain the attention of all the viewers watching TV, they're gonna make their commercial a gajillion times louder than the previous commercial before. It ended up being really distorted, like blasted some people's TV speakers, like hurt their ears, whatever. Essentially the FCC decided like, no, if you wanna advertise on TV, you have to have a roughly same set of decibel level as everybody else. Specifically this $25,000 piece of equipment. It keeps the volume for commercials within the limits set by the FCC. That's what Spotify, YouTube, everybody's doing. It's the same principle. They want everything to be uniform across their channel. Okay, so you've uploaded something to YouTube and you think, yeah, the volume's been lowered. How can you tell? Well, it's really simple. As long as you have the Google Chrome browser, here's an example, uh, Stop Breathing by Playboy Cardi. We all love this song. Right click the video, go to Stats for Nerds. What you're gonna pay attention to is this little line right here that says volume slash normalized. This first number, 100%, all that is is just the loudness of this YouTube YouTube volume slider here. So if I stop it at halfway-ish, it's like 29% if we go all the way, 100. But here's the main part, 46% or 6.8 decibels. In other words, this beat has been lowered by 6.8 decibels. So I have this project open in FL Studio trying to make a uh, wheezy type beat. And that 6.8 decibels would be the equivalent of me taking this master channel volume knob and lowering it by 6.8. Like look in the top left corner, four, five, six point eight. It is so much quieter. Way too quiet. Here's the normal. So you can see how this would be a problem. If you're posting beats to YouTube to try to sell them and a potential rapper comes along and listens to them, if it's way too quiet, they're gonna be like, yo, I can barely hear this, it doesn't slap, I'm moving on to the next one, you just lost a sale. But the problem with this method in trying to identify whether or not your beat has been lowered in volume is that it takes forever. You have to export the whole thing, load it to Tunes to Tube or Premiere Pro or whatever, then upload it to YouTube, wait for it to load, then right click. That takes way too long. Here's a shortcut. Basically go to this free website, loudnesspenalty.com take the loudest part of your beat by hitting shift E. It's the highlight tool. Go right here. This is the loudest part of my beat. You'll see there's like an 808 here on the bottom. Just hit shift control R. Export it as an MP3 file. And then you can go to this website and just drag and drop it. That took less than 10 seconds versus having to upload it to YouTube, which would take several minutes. So right here, if I were to leave my beat as is and upload it to YouTube, YouTube would squash it by negative, by 6.5 decibels. That's just like the stop breathing beat. So let's pause for a second. We know why this is happening. We know how to tell if this is happening to our beats, but how can we fix it? Sadly, after experimenting for hours, it seems like the main culprit that's causing the volume of your beats to be lowered is your 808. I know, it, it's painful to hear, especially if we're all making hip hop beats, drums are the dominant factor in a lot of the beats, but it is typically the 808. And here, let's run a few experiments. So with my beat, I exported a part that has no 808, like there's no 808 on the bottom. You already saw me export the part with the 808, and here's the difference. So here is without the 808 being dropped in, there is no decibel change. But just to clarify real quick, you should never strive for zero decibel change. Like that's almost impossible. Even a really quiet beat like Over My Dead Body by Drake, kind of a lo-fi beat. If you were to right click, look at stats for nerds, this has been lowered by about 1.6 decibels. And there's not really any hard hitting 808 in here. Try not to go for zero. I'd say anything in the two to four decibel range is great. You can play around on YouTube, like look at different beats. Here's a Wiz Khalifa 420 beat. This was lowered by 5.2, that's kind of a lot. Empire of the Sun, Walking on a Dream, cool. 
lowered by seven decibels. That's a lot. So I'd say anything two to four, you're coming out ahead. Anything more than four, it's gonna be pretty noticeable. But basically, like I said, the 808 is the main culprit. So a few things that I did, and I'm not an expert, feel free to research this more. I just lowered the volume of my 808. Something else that you can do, and this isn't exact science, but on your master channel, add a parametric EQ2 to that open it up, click this uh, arrow right here, make sure your histogram is enabled. This is a feature that should be included already in FL Studio 20 or beyond versions. It'll allow you to see like where the frequencies are spiking across the, the spectrum. Take a look at this uh, plus six mark right here and pretend that there's an invisible ceiling like sort of going from left to right. Any frequencies in this base range that jump above that plus six decibel mark, there's a very good chance that's gonna trigger YouTube to lower the volume of your beat. So let's take a look at mine. You can tell mine's sort of just barely touching that plus six invisible ceiling. So I could let that breathe a little bit more if I wanted to. Um, again, just it's a tricky balance. Like if you lower it too much, your 808 is going to sound boring. If you raise it too much, YouTube might lower your volume. So just play around with it. So if I take that lowered snippet from my beat, it's now negative 2.7, which I said again, two to four is kind of that sweet spot. All right, so I hope that helps everyone. I know, again, I'm not an expert. If you know more about this subject, please comment it down below. Feel free to do your own research, watch more videos. Again, this is just sort of the starting point and trial and error stuff that I've learned. Um, so hopefully it helps you if you're you're planning to sell beats on YouTube or BeatStars, things like that. But anyway, I appreciate you guys sticking with me until the end. Until then, I guess I will catch you all in the next video.